Howdy y'all, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today, we're going to be looking at this amazing structure right here. But first, I wanted to say thank you. The channel just reached 27,000 subscribers and I'm really appreciative of all of you for being here. Now, does this design look familiar to you at all? This is actually the original vaulted archway, the first vaulted archway, a miraculous construction, one that would infamously reshape the architectural history of the Middle East and eventually the rest of the world. This structure was part of a larger Iwan, which in later years became a staple of Islamic architecture. However, the Iwan and the vaulted archway predate the Muslim conquest of the Middle East by many centuries. This vaulted archway actually comes to us from the earlier Sassanid or Iranian Empire. And this massive piece of history is known as the Arch of Tesiphon or the Iwan of Khuzro. In today's video, I'd like to showcase for you the oldest images of the Arch of Tesiphon that I could find, as well as giving you a brief description of Khosro I the Sassanid or Iranian Empire, as well as looking into the architecture and how that influenced the later Middle Eastern dynasties. Now, after the creation of the Arch of Tesiphon, and after it became well known around the world, this really became a staple of the Iranian or the Sassanid dynasty. And after this, Many other architects around the world would try to mimic this design. You can find vaulted archways like this beginning to appear in Catholic or Christian cathedrals, as well as many other religious buildings all around the world. This was one of the most influential buildings of its time, and many ancient historians, those alive when the Arch of Tesiphon was at its peak, were noted as describing the Arch of Tesiphon as one of the seven wonders of the modern world. Now, from here on out in this video, I'd like to dive into the history a bit of the Sassanid or Iranian Empire. And from here on out, I will refer to this empire as Sassanid. We will also look into the history and the achievements of Khosrow I, who is said to not only have created this massive palace, which included the Arch of Tesiphon, but he also has many other achievements, which are worth noting briefly in this video. So let's get right into it. The Sassanid Empire was known as the Empire of Iranians by those who lived within its borders during its peak. This was a Neo-Persian Empire, or the Second Persian Empire. However, historians later renamed this empire the Sassanid Empire, based off the ruling house of that empire, which was the House of Sassan. And this ruling family endured from 224 through 651, making it the longest lived Persian imperial dynasty of all time. The religion of the Sassanid Empire was Zoroastrianism. However, something worth note here is that even in its earliest times, the Sassanid Empire was fully supportive of all religions and allowed freedom of all religions in its empire. Now, within this narrative, we are also told that the Sassanid Empire had one arch rival. This was their neighbor to the north, the Roman Empire, and later the Byzantine Empire. We are told many of the struggles throughout the entirety of the Sassanid Empire's reign in the Middle East was fueled by the wars that the Sassanid Empire had against the Roman Empire. And we can also consider the different achievements of Khosrow I and how he seemingly conquered parts of the Byzantine Empire only to incorporate them into his own kingdom. And I'd like to discuss that just a little bit before we dive into the true history of the Archway of Tesiphon. Tesiphon was the capital of the Sassanid Empire from 226 through 637. Tesiphon included the Tesiphon Palace, or the Palace of Khosrow, and this also included our great arch that we're focused on in this video today. However, within the history of the Tesiphon Great Arch, we are told that it was built somewhat mysteriously at some point between the 3rd and 6th centuries. This is where we get to the time of Khosrow, said to be one of, if not the greatest leader and possibly the greatest ruler of any pre-Islamic Middle Eastern empire. 
at least according to the historians. So my question became, why and how did he build this great archway? Tessafon, the ancient capital city, was built after a war with the Byzantine Empire. Did Khosrow possibly rebuild the city of Tessafon using newly discovered Roman, Byzantine, or Phoenician techniques? Khosrow's achievements and the things that are noted as making him a great leader are as follows, and we'll just give a brief recap of his life here. Khosrow ruled from September 531 through 579. He inherited the Sassanid Empire while it was at war with the Byzantine Empire, and Khosrow signed the Perpetual Peace in 532, in which he received 11,000 pounds of gold from Justinian I. Gassanids, the Byzantine Christian vessels, interfered with life in the empire of the Sassanids. Khosrow then broke the treaty with the Byzantine and he invaded the Byzantine Empire. This he did himself, on foot personally, with his own troops. He sacked the town of Antioch, he bathed publicly in the Mediterranean Sea, and he defeated Justinian's forces in public chariot races. Essentially, he went into the Byzantine Empire and he embarrassed the Byzantine Empire. He then invaded and captured Lazica and made it part of the Sassanid Empire as well. In 545, after beginning to advance into both Mesopotamia and Syria, the Byzantine Emperor Justinian pleaded to hold the battles of war only at Lazica. By 557, after suffering a slew of major defeats, the Byzantine Empire signed a truce to end the conflict. This truce was cemented by the 562 50-year peace treaty. However, in 572, Justin II broke the peace treaty unsuccessfully. In response, Khosrow besieged and captured the vastly fortified Byzantine city of Dara. This drove Justin II to the brink of insanity. Khosrow followed this by then capturing Yemen and adding that to his Sassanid empire. Khosrow expressed his desire for equality at all times, even through his conquests. He allowed all religions to practice freely in the Sassanid empire, and he promoted religious growth for all. The Catholic Church of the East was officially known during Khosrow's life as the Church of Iran. Khosrow also constructed what might be considered the greatest of all walls in ancient times. Instead of being one long wall in one direction, like the Great Wall of China, Khosrow's Great Wall was actually four separate walls which surrounded the greater Sassanid Empire. This included the Great Wall of Gorgon, the Durbent Wall, the Wall of the Arabs, and the Wall of Tamisha. Khosrow also constructed a great canal which would supply water to the greater parts of the Sassanid Empire. This is known today as the Nahrahan Canal. Khosrow, after capturing Antioch and other great Byzantine cities and towns, constructed a massive city nearby the Iranian capital of Tessaphon to be a sister city to his capital. Here, in his new fortified city, he named it Wei Antioch Hosro, meaning city that is better than Antioch. He then released the captured Byzantines and permitted them freedom. The city had fortified walls, health care, public baths, and a hippodrome, and it had really the highest amenities available at that time, which Khosrow provided to the freed people of the Byzantine Empire. Essentially, he would take the best parts of the people he captured, and he would try to incorporate their beliefs and their inventions into his kingdom, making him one of the greatest leaders of any Middle Eastern dynasty. Khosrow was then known as the Philosopher King, he would research every single one of his opponents before battle, and upon capturing their cities and towns, like I said, he would take the best parts of their culture and try to incorporate that into his plans for the future of the Sassanid kingdom. 
Kuzro held absolutely no prejudices, but quite the opposite. He actually strived for knowledge of other people and to unite all people in the knowledge of the known world. Kuzro had later inventions that helped him rise to popularity and they would also become world renowned. We have inventions like backgammon and chess, which can be dated to Kuzro's kingdom and they were created to keep his mind, quote, working on all cylinders. We also have Kuzro being labeled as the first person in history to not only create a hospital, but to create his hospital by Mardison or divided by the symptoms and afflictions of the patients held within. Kuzro's most famous creation, however, and possibly the most famous ancient structure in the Middle East before the Muslim conquest, is the royal archway of Tessafon and the ancient capital city and palace of Tessafon, which Khosrow created. The royal palace of Tessafon, also known as Tak Khosra, is located in modern-day Salman Pak, Iraq. All that remains of the royal palace is this absolutely massive archway and parts of the debilitated surrounding walls. The arch was considered the largest freestanding single-span vault archway in the entire world for many centuries, built entirely out of brickwork. Tak Khosra is ironically on the 33rd and 44th parallels respectively, and the archway itself stands well over 121 feet tall. The exact time or even process of the construction is highly debated among scholars and relatively unknown. It is the largest man-made freestanding vault of ancient times and was only surpassed in recent years by more modern steel works. The arch would have been the entrance to the throne room of the palace of Tessafon, which based off the arch would have been at least 110 feet tall, 80 feet wide, and over 160 feet long. The top of the arch of Tessafon is over 3 feet thick, while the bottom of the arch of Tessafon has locations that are over 21 feet thick. It is the largest vault ever constructed and one of the largest archways, even considering modern construction. The arch, all 121 plus feet of it, was apparently made without any framework or support of any kind. The math was so precise and the angles were cut so perfectly that each brick was laid at exactly 18 degrees and allowed to set in place and quickly dry with minimal use of mortar. This archway is all we have left of the ancient palace city and fortified walls of the capital of Tessafon. In 637, Tessafon was sacked and besieged during the Muslim conquest of Persia. For many years, the palace was then used as a mosque. However, as weather conditions in the Middle East begin to shift and change, the area surrounding Tessafon was greatly abandoned eventually. And this was the most interesting part of all this. In the early 10th century, what remained of the massive palace of Tessafon was torn down and used for bricks, which were then in return used to build the Taj Palace in Baghdad. Diving into the European travelers who reached the Middle East during the 18th and 19th centuries, the Arch of Tessafon would then become world-renowned even into Europe. It was considered one of the, quote, lost seven wonders of the world, even though the archway and much of the wall still remained intact at that time. However, the majority of the palace and fortified city appeared to be buried or destroyed beginning in the 18th century, and this culminates with a great flood that apparently hit the Middle East in the year of 1888. Nowadays, when we look at the archway of Tessafon, we can see that it's very much in a barren area of land. There is not much surrounding this ancient fortified city and I find that to be very revealing to the history of this area. If you look at pictures in 2022, you can see that the government of the area has tried to develop this location and make it a 
monument or a historical location. But as we look through the photographs of the late 1800s and the early 1900s, you can see that this archway and this palaceway really appear in the middle of nowhere or in the middle of an entirely deserted land. A desert is what it appears. And there is nothing surrounding this fortified city and this archway, at least from the photographs that I saw. And I found that to be very interesting. Something occurred from when this was created until modern times to basically leave the entire area barren of any sort of wildlife, of any sort of plant life, of anything like that. However, in the earliest records of the ancient fortified city of Tessafon and the archway, we have depictions that show that this was a vastly occupied landscape. It had trees and it had running water and it was very different than the photographs we see in the 1900s and before that. So it just makes you wonder exactly what happened to this area. And furthermore, we have two photographs which will be the main focus of the end of this video. These two photographs are the only known photographs I could find of the archway of Tessafon before the Great Flood of 1888. And in these two photographs, you can see that the archway, at least in my opinion, appears to be much larger, even with the walls attached. It appears to be much more advanced. And when we compare the archway as depicted in the 1860s photographs and compare that to the more modern photographs, it looks like we're looking at two completely different structures. So I will just leave that at that. And I'd love to hear your opinion on it down below. What do you think about the archway of Tessafon and its creator or the man that it was possibly built for, Khusro I? What do you think when we compare the oldest depictions of the archway of Tessafon to the more modern photographs? Do you see any differences in design and architecture between these two depictions? And when we look at the photographs from the 1860s and we see this structure, in more of its original glory. Can you fathom how this was built using no tools, using no support, using nothing to hold the brickwork in place? This was all freestanding architecture. And I find that to be absolutely fascinating. We see this influence that appears all throughout the old world. We see buildings that were constructed like this and we see vaulted archways becoming commonplace in later years. We are told that it all stemmed from this original archway of Tessafon. This was the original vaulted archway. This was a freestanding vaulted archway. This was created by mathematicians and architects who we no longer know their names. And it's just absolutely fascinating to me that this sits in the middle of the desert. And only now have we begun to try to unwrap the history of this beautiful location. So again, I'd love to hear your thoughts and your comments down below. If there's anything that stood out to you, please let me know. And if you have any relevant links you'd like to share, please leave them in the comment section and we can do a little bit more research together. And just to wrap up the video, you should definitely like this video and share this video if you enjoy this content and subscribe to the channel if you are not already. I've had many requests from my viewers to make different ways that I can connect with you. And one thing I did do is I reached out to Custom Inc and I had about 50 custom Jared Boosters t-shirts made. Now, I had these made when the channel first reached 15,000 subscribers and I have about a handful of these tees left, but I wanna make them available for anybody that wants them. So if you hit this link right here, anybody who makes a contribution of 20 or more, just leave your address and I will get this t-shirt shipped out to you literally tomorrow or as soon as you make your contribution. I mean, I just want to be able to put my gear on my fans. And if you love the channel enough that you'll wear a Jared Boosters t-shirt, I want you to have it because all your support means absolutely the world to me. This channel would not exist without supporters like you, without subscribers like you, without commenters like you, without those who are willing to share their ideas and to open up their minds. So... I just want to say thank you. I appreciate all of you and I look forward to talking with you more on the next video.